a wonderful run. Larry. I just meant this morning specifically. I wasn't meaning more broadly. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we're busy. We're busy today. It is a busy day. Larry, yes, ma'am. you and the president were always pretty quick to take credit when things were going well for the economy. So where is the president right now when so many people are suffering? Well, look, <laughs> there's a lot of suffering out there, I agree. Uh, but I, I will also argue the economy has registered a very strong comeback from the uh, peak of the pandemic contraction, uh, including today's jobs numbers with a 6.7% unemployment rate. Uh, now, there's still over 10 million people who are jobless, and that's not good. That is hardship, and by the way, that should be a target of any assistance package. Um, however, at the peak, it was 23 million, and um, we now got 150 American, 150 million Americans working, and uh, that's way up. And the 10 million who are unemployed is way down. So I like that. And I want to say also, look at um, in terms of these numbers. I, I know you're not going to get deep. In we still got, uh, there's a housing boom going on, consumer spending is strong. Uh, there's a lot of business and factory production going on. The ISMs and the PMIs were nearly 60%. That's a very healthy number. Uh, you look at that, it looks, all that stuff looks like a V. Um, my friend, uh, one of Wall Street's top economists, Ed Hyman, has his Christmas tree index. And uh, that's growing at 29% year on year, a little holiday cheer. So, uh, you know, I, I think we have much more work to do. I understand that. Um, but I think we've come a long Where way. Where is the president? Nearly 2,000 people a, a day are dying economy. right now of COVID, obviously having economic impacts. Where is the president's leadership on this? I don't understand. Where is the president? Are. We're not hearing from him about COVID or about economic relief or about helping these people who are unemployed. Well, he has spoken on unemployment favors the targeted assistance package. He's always favored that. Uh, so that's the point I'm going to make. Number two, I, I was, we're not going to sell this here, but I would say to you that he has put together a remarkable infrastructure in just a few months, six or seven months, to fight COVID. And look, it's a global event. I mean, all the countries are having the same problem. But I will say this. His Operation Warp Speed, which he developed and led, has produced, you know, help is on the way. Can I just say that? Help is on the way. The vaccines are a week or two away. We'll get 20 million plus by the end of this month, 40 million by January, and up to 100 million in late March, April. That's what the scientists are estimating with these great companies. It is operation, we poured billions of dollars into the vaccines, working with the private sector and all the brilliant people involved in uh, developing these uh, uh, vaccines. And the president opened that door, Operation Warp Speed. We, we've done in a handful of months what normally takes 10 years plus. I, you may not agree, I respect that, but I think he's done a tremendous job, tremendous job on this project. Larry, there's, 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 there's a 908 billion dollar bipartisan COVID package president have any views on that? Is that dollar figure in the right ballpark in, terms of in the White House's view? You know, we've always kind of wanted to talk policies, not dollars. Um, we leave that leadership to Senator McConnell uh, and Speaker Pelosi. They're talking. I would say it has a somewhat more optimistic tone. Um, but the issues here, uh, again, on policy, there's a couple of key targeted areas that, that our team the Senate uh, leadership want. Um, additions to small business PPP, um, uh, some federal plus up on unemployment assistance to deal with the hardship that we were discussing a moment ago, uh, some uh, liability insurance uh, curbs, which would help small business, help schools, help local governments. You know, they could all be sued. Very hard to trace these uh, COVID uh, breakouts. Um, so those are some of the key points. And by the way, you've got roughly $600 billion that's unspent and could be redeployed or reappropriated. And so that's... You don't want to say whether 908 is too high, I too don't. low. I don't want to go there. I'm going to leave that to Sarah McConnell and 
and speak of clothing and others. Uh, we're in touch daily right now with everybody. Uh, that includes the uh, Republican House Leader, uh, Kevin McCarthy, who's done such a great job. Larry, can I just follow up on your point very quickly? Um, given the fact that some of these payments are about to run out, and given the economic numbers which we saw today, which aren't how, bad. I, and I know you disagree with some of the characterizations, but you've acknowledged that it's below what, what you were expecting, what economists were hoping for. How critical is it that there is a bill passed in this lame duck session? Look, I have argued for months, going back to July and August, that uh, targeted areas should be done through. And I see no reason why we couldn't have done this last summer or early in the fall, uh, particularly small business and unemployment. And I would add to that, I know Senator McConnell is very key on this, and I think he's right. I think some liability insurance uh, reforms would also help small business. Look, we want to keep the schools open. We want to keep the businesses open. And we know of specific targeted programs that would help that. And there's about $600 billion of unspent money. I mean, in a sense, I'm not going to call it free money, but it really doesn't represent additional spending. You follow? Now, um, well, I'll, I'll just I'll just stop there. That, that, we have called for that. We, we have wanted that for months and months and months and months. We didn't want a $303 trillion package. And we didn't want to spend a lot of money on other matters that had nothing to do with COVID. And, and just to very quickly... So I, don't, I, don't, I think the president's been there from day one. Very quickly, does the president bear any responsibility for these jobs numbers that are not recovering as quickly as some economists? The jobs numbers are doing very well. You can't, this is one month. Six points. Look, go back. Take a look at the CBO, the Federal Reserve, where they had the jobless rate a year end and early next year. We are at least three percentage points below where those geniuses predicted. I call that a pretty good thing. And I will say again. Relief package, the bipartisan relief package, very healthy. But also, fundamentally, this was a healthy economy pre pandemic. The basis, the roots of this were full of incentives the tax cuts, the deregulation, the better trade deals. So we were able to withstand this. Take a look at what's doing in Europe. You want to see contrast? Take a look. And well, like parts of Asia. So, is the president there responsible? I say the president bears responsibility for the pluses and the positives, and I know it's not common to give him that, but I, I'm going to make that defense. And again, I come back, look, help is on the way. The vaccines are coming, okay? Um, show me, historically, in science, a vaccine for a major virus like this. In, in six months. Seriously. Give the guy some credit. He deserves credit. We poured money into it. We lowered regulation. And we're still doing that. The FDA is, so, you know, I, I don't want to go on and on and on. You're a good reporter. You know the story. That's our point of view. We remain my reporter. Larry, Larry, one of the um, policies that you didn't mention as part of this COVID relief package was uh, additional aid for state and local governments. Right. The bipartisan framework has about 160, 180 billion dollars. Is that an acceptable figure to the administration? I will let the legislators work that out. But would you, would the administration take any sort of state and local? Because the president has been critical of that money. And he still is. And he still is. He doesn't want to deal with mismanaged states and localities. Uh, but I, I don't want to comment on it because um, uh, I will leave that to the negotiations. Larry, yes. Larry, how serious is the president about vetoing the defense bill? Well, I will let him speak for himself, but he has indicated that he uh, would like to see a liability shield reform with respect to these uh, social media companies. And I happen to agree. They're acting as editors, publishers. Uh, there are censorship issues. No one ever intended, you know, going back to the, you know, this pertains to the 1996 uh, telecom decency bill, and uh, as you know, and uh, it looks to me like in 
this era of uh, social media, that needs to be reformed. And Section 230 is the place to reform it. And uh, I'm not going to give you the wording, but I'm just saying uh, that Liability Shield uh, has got to be re-examined at a minimum. Now, regarding the uh, uh, defense authorization bill, I I'm not going to, the President will, will make that decision. But I can tell you, he continues to very much favor uh, getting rid of this 230, uh, Section 230 uh, liability sheet. What would be the point of vetoing that bill if it's going to get passed over the objection of the President? I'm not going to make any forecasts on that. On the topic of Europe, do uh, you have any views on the ongoing UK-European Union Brexit negotiations which are approaching their conclusion? Is there anything that the not US today. and the UK can do not as far as negotiations? Not, not today. On? Not today. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Have, uh, happy holidays. Happy holidays.